Greetings and welcome to another edition of Montpelier Connection. I'm State Representative Mike Merwicki from Putney and I represent the Wyndham Ford District of Putney, Dummerston, and Westminster. Uh, we're starting to get into the warm-ups for our uh, legislative session of 2014 and there's a, a date coming up October 1st uh, which is the start of Vermont Health Connect, Vermont's Health Exchange. So today we have a, a special guest here, Richard Davis. And uh, Richard has a history of, of being a medical provider as well as being involved in health care reform and health insurance reform. Uh, the other reason Richard is here is because he's probably a bigger Red Sox fan than me, and this is a good season for the Red Sox. It sure is. Um, we're um, looking at the start of um, Vermont's health exchange, and that's the, the mandated uh, marketplace that that Obamacare uh, requires all states to put together. Uh, Vermont is putting theirs together, but it's a step on the way towards um, universal single-payer single, single payer coverage that we hope to, to get going in 2017. Uh, Richard has been working uh, for a long time in this, and, and I think part of his inspiration is, comes from his, his time as a medical provider, seeing what the healthcare system we have does and doesn't provide. And, as we're, we know now, we're, we're in a system that is unsustainable. It's unaffordable for a lot of Vermonters, and um, fewer people have ready access to health care, and uh, more and more paying for less and less. Um, Richard, do you want to share a little bit about your history as a, as a medical provider? Yeah, and then okay. So I've been, been a nurse in Vermont for about 35 years. So I worked in a variety of settings. And I think what informed my political you know, point of view is, you know, seeing people, especially people finding difficulty paying for things, accessing the system, realizing that there were just too many people that even though we have, and I believe in Vermont, especially here in Southern Vermont, we have a very high quality delivery system, but not everybody can afford it or have access to it, and that's the big issue, and that's what we address primarily when we, when we talk about health care reform. Unfortunately, we mostly deal with insurance reform, but yeah. there also are internal systemic real, you know, nuts and bolts things in the healthcare system that need to change. And, and I think that luckily in Vermont, we, we've been addressing that. We've been working on, on the dual track. So we've worked on we're working on access, affordability insurance, which the exchange is doing, but our leadership, you and, and the people that represent us, Governor Shulman, have realized that, um, you know, just going into this exchange isn't enough. And in fact, if you really look at it, it sort of brings us backwards a little because Vermont was ahead of the country in a lot of ways. But we're making the best of it, and hopefully it will, we'll be able to move. I think that the, the intention is we move from a system now being created, this marketplace where the private sector provides insurance, and then we take all these different insurances and put them in one pool, which is basically single payer, simplify it, and make it a little, um, we'll make it a lot simpler for people and administratively simpler, and, and hopefully the costs come down and, and provides greater access and affordability for everybody. Um, and which kind of leads me to, I want to give an example of how Vermont is, is really doing a good job with some of the substance of reform, which we had talked about before we just started it, which was um, there's something called the Vermont Blueprint. And a number of years ago, I think it, the whole concept may have started in 2006, somewhere mm -hmm. around there, um, Vermont realized, well, we knew that we were on the path to reform. We wanted to move ahead. And we were looking at, well not we, but the, you know, policy makers, politicians, leadership, activists, anybody involved in healthcare, we were looking at where the money is and where you can make the biggest impact on the quality of people's lives. And this concept of the blueprint came along, which is really just, it's a chronic disease management program. And in fact, a lot of the elements in the 2010 federal law, the Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act, that relate to disease management were based on the Vermont Blueprint. And the director of the Blueprint actually was invited to the White House and he was down there and helped 
craft and provide input into, into the Affordable Care Act in these aspects of it. So what it does in Vermont is it, uh, it helps people provide, well, it gives them guidance for dealing with their chronic issues, which, you know, as far as I'm concerned, life is a chronic disease. So, you know, we can, and we're, we're doing that now. We're providing um, help for people. I, I don't want to go on and on. I don't, you can, we well, can go one back One of the things there. that inspired that, though, is we looked at how our health care system was and wasn't working. And one of the things we saw that I think around 60 cents of every health care dollar was going to chronic care, whether it was people with chronic diseases from lifelong cardiac care, respiratory, uh, to, to the disabled, elderly, and um, it didn't leave a lot of wiggle room for how our health care dollars were spent and we wanted to make sure, first of all, the care was being provided in the way it should. And uh, I think that there's, there's a lot that we've been doing to look at how those dollars are spent and I, I think you shared an, a story about a, an individual which we found uh, was not uncommon who was using the emergency rooms for their primary care. Right, which is, it's very common. So one of the things that, you know, I am involved in a blueprint community health team in Brattleboro and they're all over the state. And one thing, I'll tell you that little story, but before I mention that, I think it's worth mentioning that this, uh, these teams have been around for a few years in the state. The, lo the longest running one is up in St. Johnsbury, but what they're finding is pretty amazing. Most of the uh, information that they've gathered in the um, data tracking they've done indicate that people, patients who are being seen by these blueprint groups, teams, for example, in St. Johnsbury, they cut their ER, their emergency room visits, and their hospital admissions by 25 percent. Now that's, you're talking about putting a dent in that 60 percent, that 60 cents, that's a lot of money because yeah. Hospital care is about 60% of, of the uh, budget of health care in the state. So if you can reduce that, but not only, it's not only about money, it's about improving people's lives. Exactly. So the example I like to tell people, and, and it took me a while to understand this myself, even after being in this field for 35 years, but you know, there's always something new that comes along. So. One of the groups of people that we work with in our community health team is, you know, people that are being, that are going to the emergency room a lot. I mean, they probably have valid reasons for going, but maybe they're, either their problems could be dealt with either by the primary care physician or by talking to somebody or trying to sort out if, what kind of care they really need. Part of it's education. But what, what I found, which was kind of interesting, is that the people I've been working with who have been going to the emergency room a lot, if I just show up once a week, I don't even have to do much. Talk to them, check in. I don't even spend a lot of time sometimes. But they know that I'm coming, and just showing up, some of these people, they don't even go back to the ER anymore, or they go much less frequently. They're not going to the hospital as much. So you call it hand-holding, case management. I don't know. You can call it anything you want. but. What it really is, is is just showing that you're caring about somebody. And, and we're talking about a population of people who have had difficult lives, but a lot of barriers to overcome. Um, people have not always been kind to them, you know, and so a group of people may come along, like the care coordinator, like me, the nurse, or we have a social worker or a mental health therapist. And these people are actually showing up on a regular basis, providing consistency, some kind of framework for their lives. And that's, to me, that's, what, that's sort of the essence of this chronic disease management. I mean, in addition to that, we actually do help people with problems. I mean, we, you know, maybe transportation or provide therapy for them or help them with paperwork and all that, some very concrete things. But just showing up is a big part of it. Yeah. Well, in, in my years working uh, in youth and community development, uh, we know that the more connections, the more attachments uh, kids have to adults, caring adults in their lives, the better off they are. Um, there's, a, there's a system of measuring that uh, called the developmental assets, which is based on surveying a million youth hmm. uh, over 20 years. And what they, they can show clearly, the, the more people they have in their life, the, the less likely they are 
to, to act in risk, risky behaviors and the more likely they are to, to act in a positive way. Oh, that's interesting. Just like adults, yeah. we, we, the more connections we have, I think the, the better off we all are and if people are not having those healthy connections in their lives, and we can provide them, it, it enhances their lives, it enhances our communities. Well, yeah, and I, you know, and I may have understood that on an intellectual level, but I, you know, when you start doing it yeah. and you see the results, it's pretty amazing. So. Yeah. If people are interested uh, at the Vermont Department of Health's website, uh, which is healthvermont.gov, um, you can look up the blueprint. And, and this is real health care reform. Uh, this is helping uh, get health care. A lot of what we're talking about really is about health insurance reform, uh, which is usually the, gate, the gateway to people getting health care. Um, but we realized we, there's some things we needed to do better in terms of preventive medicine and mm -hmm. how we react to chronic, chronic illness. And uh, that's what the blueprint is, is doing for us. Yeah, and, it, and I think it's, it's been very successful. And I, I meet on a regular basis with my counterparts around the state. And what I find amazing is a lot of the people that are doing the same work as, as I'm doing, um, have the same background, we've been around for a long time, we're kind of a little older people, yeah. but have that experience with the system in our communities, yeah. with systems and, and the different networks. And uh, so there's a really good group of people doing this work and uh, it's very, it's the kind of work, well, I guess the best way to describe it is, it really requires, it's not the kind of work that a healthcare person would be doing like right out of school. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it really almost demands that you have a number of years of experience because um, you're dealing with so many complicated things and, and then you really need to know your community well. You need yeah. to know the resources and that kind of stuff. So, but those are the kinds of people that have stepped up to the plate in other yeah. parts of the state too and, and they're doing the same kind of work and yeah. I think maybe we're gonna see tremendous results from yeah. this. One of the things that we're looking at are long-term results, the idea being that um, one of the reasons as a nation our, our health care outcomes have slipped to where we're 18th and 19th. The only thing we're number one in anymore is spending money. Well, big surprise. And, uh, um, but this will, will bring outcomes up. As people have access to care, I think they'll have better care. And, and um, uh, right across the board, I, I think... Uh, this is going to benefit us, and in the long term, it's going to save money as well. And I think it'll also be a model for the rest of the country. There are yeah. other states that are, they have similar projects in places in Kentucky and yeah. a few other places, but um, this is the trend, and this is really, it's not rocket science. It's not yeah. like somebody came up with this amazing new idea. Yeah. It's, it's very basic. Yeah. But it's, it's a commitment more than it is a new way of doing things. And yeah. you make the commitment and it pays. It's yeah. that simple. Well, one of the things it's not based on is a market base, marketplace. Uh, this is about getting care to people. And it's not just about making money, um, which moves us into the other realm here. Because one of the reasons Vermont has moved to, to reform health insurance is because uh, fewer and fewer people had access. Uh, money became the... the the barrier between people getting access or not. Uh, more and more Vermonters uh, either don't have insurance or are underinsured, meaning they ha either have a very high copay um, or um, a uh, deductible. So it, it really prevents them from getting care when they need it. Right. And a lot of people in that situation will defer, will defer, and, and just wait until things are at uh, more of an urgent uh, need for, for care, and then, and then uh, we're, we're spending more money in the long run. Um, you've been working at this for a long time now. Uh, health care reform and health insurance reform goes back to Howard Dean. Uh, well, it goes back to Bismarck. You know? Know? Well, there you <laughs> 1865 go. in yeah. Germany. I mean, it's, yeah. yeah, no, Howard Dean and, you know, in Vermont, he's probably, that's kind of a landmark time. Yeah. In that late 80s, early 90s, yeah. um, and we started on that road. Actually, there was a single-payer bill in the legislature back then, and it didn't go very far, and then we ended up, actually ended up with a commission that I served on for a number of years yep. that Howard Dean appointed me to, and uh, we came up with reports, and, um, but the issue never died. It sort of smoldered and kind of went on the back burner for a while, and then probably in, I'd say, 
around 2004 or so, it started to heat up again. And then by 2006, we actually got some legislation passed, and things have been kind yeah. of moving forward ever since. Well, when, when Michael Bohusky uh, was Speaker of the House, uh, they passed a single-payer bill. Uh, didn't make it past the governor at the mm. time, but it, it moved us into when into, was that? into Catamount, the the the, um, the oh that was the original that, 06 that, bill yeah that right. got modified at yep. the last minute by Governor Douglas well because, because Douglas backroom deals yep yeah, so I remember that th that um, <laughs> was the compromise right because uh, it wasn't going to go anywhere so they right. took half a loaf rather yeah, than yeah I remember no that well we made progress yeah. but you know yeah. we didn't get everything we wanted no nope. and now we're continuing to move forward and I think uh, as we head towards um, 2017 and, and a, a single payer. Um, a lot of us believe that uh, taking the for-profit insurance companies and some of them claim to be non-profits, but you know there's a lot of money being made right. when you're paying your chief executives in the millions. Well, it's kind uh, of a false distinction it in is. some ways. Yep. Uh, right now, though, we're looking at the start of our own Vermont Health Exchange, where people can go online. Right. Uh, you can you tell us a little bit about that? You've gone through the navigator training. Yeah, I, got, I you know, I had a headache after about two hours. It's, I mean, this is very complicated material. I think the best advice for people. Well, I'll just backtrack a little bit. So, there are groups of people that will need to engage in this m new marketplace. They have from October first, actually, till the end of March to sign up. Yeah. But the insurance will begin, the coverage will begin January 1st. So they can start October 1st, which is next week. Right. I don't know where this is going to air, but yeah. so anyway. But October 1st. So what does that mean? Well, I guess the best way to explain it is to say who needs to do this. So anybody without insurance can check in. Anybody, individuals? Individuals. Or, or working people? Working people yeah. without insurance. Um, if you're already on Medicaid, straight Medicaid, you don't have to do anything. But if you're on VHAP or Catamount, you're going to have to change the insurance you have. And if you don't do anything by uh, March 15th of next year, you're out of luck and you won't have any insurance and won't be able to sign up to the next enrollment period, which may be you know, almost a year away. P all those people have received letters. I think they got sent out today because I got a copy of one today. Um, but sometimes people don't understand or they don't read them and they go in the trash. And, so anyway, the more we get the word out. So if you're on VHAP or Catamount, you need to sign up for this new insurance. Yeah. If you are in a, a business where the employer has 50 or fewer employees, they'll all have to make decisions. So rather than get into all the details, I think the best, and I think the best advice for people is figure out what your individual situation is. So how do you do that? If you're comfortable using the internet uh what's the website it's, it's um healthconnect.vermont.gov okay so you go to this website and i have to say it's pretty good as far as i can tell it has a lot of good information but what it also has is a calculator yep. so what you can do is you plug in the numbers that it asked for in your individual situation and there's different scenarios and you can find out how much it's going to cost you and how much of a subsidy you can right. receive. You may receive a subsidy based on your income, and that will calculate it for you. What the subsidy means, and this is where it gets a little complicated, there's a number of plans available at different levels. Now, the coverage is all the same no matter what you pick. Nothing changes. Coverage is all the same. What, what varies is the amount of premium and copay and deductible. So the plans are listed as platinum to bronze in different metals so the platinum you pay the most for the premium but you have the least amount of copay and deductible so that may be good this is where you have to think about your individual situation if you're someone who anticipates or uses a lot of health care over the course of a year it may be worth it for you on the other hand if you're somebody that doesn't use a lot of health care but wants to make sure they have good coverage you get a bronze plan, you pay a lot less in the premium every year, but uh, you would um, have to pay more out of pocket for some of the costs, like co-pays, deductibles especially. Now, the other thing, in terms of subsidy, depending on your income, 
So say, for example, you'd put in the calculator and it says you have a subsidy of 220. There's a couple of ways you can use that. One way is um, you can take that 220 and pick a different, whatever plan you pick, and put that towards the premium. And then, so you, you might pick a high cost premium and put the 220 towards, say, 700 a month, bring it to 500. On the other hand, you may have a, a 250 premium, you put the 200 and it's only 50. So uh, you have to decide. So there are a bunch of decisions you have to make. Now, if it's too overwhelming and too complicated, there are people, official people that the state has hired called navigators. And they're available on an individual group basis to help people. In Brattleboro, there are a number, one place that you can avail yourself of these is through the Brattleboro Chamber of Commerce and the State Chamber of Commerce has uh, navigators available that business people can do that. Um, I think the clinics, uh, the free clinics, free clinics have people. Sefka also, Southeast yeah. Vermont Community Action. And we have a person at, in our blueprint team, Joan Bowman, who is available. Um, you can call her anytime and uh, um, the, anyway. And that contact information is also on the website. Yeah, but it's um, there. There's going to be information all around Vermont now. That there's going to be a, a real campaign, ad campaign that's going to be happening in newspapers, on television, on the radio. You may have heard some things already about uh, changes in, in Vermont health care. Um, so that, that information is going to be out there. But uh, I think the important thing is there are individuals that, that will be willing to meet with you. Is that right. what you're saying? Yeah, and because this is very complicated even if you're just yeah. focusing on yourself. Yeah. But also for small business owners, it gets even more complicated. Mm -hmm. So these navigators are yeah. available to sit down with the business owners and go over all the implications because if they have employees who make different salaries or have different family situations, then there may have to be a lot of different choices yeah. to be made and then there's tax implications. And so this, it's very complicated, but on the other hand, there are people available and, and they can help people sort through this and, and that's, yeah. you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to tone this down, it is very complicated, yeah. but there's help available and there's plenty of information. If you go to the website, I mean, you really, if yeah. you, you want to, you could probably get most of the information, but if you head spinning and you feel like you need help, then find yeah. a navigator. Now, one of the things that I want to be clear about here is that there is a group of people for whom nothing changes. And if you're over 65, if you're on Medicare... There's what? absolutely no change at all. Yeah. So, and people on Medicare need to know this, because I think there's a lot of fear out there. Yeah. And, and I've been getting a lot of questions from right. people over 65. Right. And we so want to assure them there's no change for you. There's no change in Medicare. And then the other question that people on Medicare have is they think that maybe somehow the exchange is going to deal with um, the Medicare Part supplemental C, yeah. policies. For now, they're not, but there are plans to deal with that in yeah. the future. But for now, if you're on Medicare, you have Medicare supplemental policy, nothing changes, Medicare yeah. Part D, all of that is unaffected. Yeah. The other group that's unaffected, as I said before, is people on straight Medicaid, which I believe is up to, in Vermont, it's 200% uh, of the poverty level. Yeah. Um, anyway, if you're just plain Medicaid, not VA or Catamount, you're unaffected. The other group that's unaffected is Dr. Dinosaur. Right. So children um, who have this program, which is a large chunk of the Vermont population, mm -hmm. absolutely no change. Yep. And also, if you work for a large employer, right. uh, over 50 people, it's not going to change. For no you. change. And then the other thing that's important to know, too, is no matter what we do, whether we move to single payer or anything, any company that's self-insured, which is generally places of 400 more employees like yeah. IBM or Bravo Hospital or Retreat, CNS, places like that, they will never be affected by any state health care reform we have because of a federal law called ERISA. So yeah. if you're in a self-insured plan and you hear about all this reform stuff, your employer can join all this stuff, but there's no obligation to do so. So yeah. you may find that nothing ever changes for yeah. you. And one of, the, one of the possibilities may be in a few years, people are going to see that this is a better deal and uh, more and more people will, will join into this even before we go to single payer. Well, that's the hope. 
You know, uh, there's always winners and losers. Unfortunately, with the, the, the exchange, there will be some people that end up paying a little more, and you know, that's yeah. kind of going to be a difficult thing. Generally, I think most people are going to make out either about the same or a little better, but there will be a few people that are a little harder. Hit. Yep, and, and we realize that, and uh, unfortunately, like you said, in, in these kind of situations, sometimes there are winners and losers. For the most part, um, what we're looking at is what's, what's best for the common good. Uh, it's, it was a difficult change last year, for instance, when we started to change the way brokers do business when we uh, ma mandated that they start to list how much they charge, actually, within mm. the insurance. They, there was some pushback on that, but yeah, I can't imagine that. people deserve to know what their money is going for. Right. One of the things we, we believe, I believe, and a lot of us in the legislature, that our health care dollars should go for health care. Right. Um, there's a lot of money being spent. I don't know that we need to spend more than we do now. We just need to spend it better, and it needs to go to health care. Yeah. Well, and it's interesting because they didn't make provisions for brokers in the new exchange, and they can actually charge a fee, and yep. you can still go to a broker. Yep, you can do that. I mean, they're not happy about it, but they, they did get included in it. That's right, yep. So. But you'll know how much you're being charged right. now. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, as we move forward, uh, there's going to be growing pains. We anticipate that. This is a new system. Uh, no other state, I think, is doing what we are in terms of moving ahead towards single payer, but it's the way the rest of the world does, does business. Right. And, and as I said before, uh, we, a lot of talk going on about the American health care system. If you've got plenty of money, it's a great system. Right. Yep. But the reality is, as a whole, our health care outcomes have been going down, 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 and and the idea here is to address the common good. Uh, well, yeah, we have the num some of the numbers are disgraceful, and I think part of it kind of mirrors what's happening in the economy. How the yeah. the gap between the rich and the poor is getting wider, and yeah. as that happens, that healthcare kind of reflects that yeah. too. Yeah. Well, we only got a couple of minutes left here. Ah, okay, but we're I, out of time already. I yeah. I appreciate. All the work you've been doing, Richard, for you taking the time here. Uh, before we go there, there's one more thing we have to talk about. Because at uh, this time last year, all of us Red Sox fans were kind right. of hanging our head. This is like, it's, it's one of the best years. And I, I think, you know, I, I'm, I'm afraid to say anything, but, yeah. <laughs> you know, they could go all the way. And, yeah. and uh, they have the pitching. They got everything's there. Even, I mean, what's amazing, even without Ellsbury, like, yeah, they're yeah. still okay. And, uh yeah, they've yeah. gone back to Sunday. I was down there, and yeah. they, they were uh, celebrating Carl Yastrzemski. Oh yeah, they had a statue, wow. and he, I think, epitomized the blue collar work ethic yeah. for for Red Sox, and they've got that again this year. Yeah, they do, and I think they got rid of uh, a lot of the prima donnas. They did, yeah. and they've got guys there that make have fun playing baseball. Right. And, and well, they're fun to watch. The fans like are. them, and I think, yeah. let's go. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, let's do it. The, Playoffs will be starting in a week or so. and Without baseball, I could not remain mentally healthy. So <laughs> it's, a, it's my mental health yeah. cure. Well, it, it's a great thing to get involved with. So yeah. I tried to explain it to somebody who, who didn't understand, and I said, well, you watch soap operas. It's like a, yeah. it's like a story that takes right. six months to unfold. Right. I, you know, people say, oh, it's so boring, and it's just so many things going on yeah. in the field. But, yeah. you know. Everybody's got their thing. You yeah, know? it's a great, great way to take yeah. a few, few hours off from the everyday stresses well, of it's, life. It's good escapism. It's better than yeah. watching like those video games where you kill people. All yep. the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a pastoral game, as right. they say. It's a game where you right. go home to win. Right. Well, I appreciate what you're doing too, Mike. I appreciate right. you having me on here. So. Well, thank you. All right, I'll, I'll be watching the playoffs. And thanks again to the people at BCTV, and we look forward to seeing you again. Until next time, this is Mike Merwicki for. Montpelier Connection.